here at the Michigan International Speedway. This place is huge. It has a grandstand capacity of 136,000 people. That doesn't include the fans in the infield, the racing teams, or the people that run the place. The track is over two miles long, and some of the best racers in the world drive here, including NASCAR and kart teams. But we're not here to race today. We're here to learn how to share the road with big trucks. And believe it or not, this is one of the safest places to teach you. While we're used to thinking of race car drivers as professional drivers, I'd like to introduce you to another kind of professional driver. This is Dave Gulak. Dave is a professional truck driver who's going to be helping us out today by driving our tractor trailer. Now, Dave doesn't drive a truck around a track like this at 200 miles per hour, but he is a trained professional just like the guys who race here. Dave, what does it take to be a professional truck driver? Well, it takes a lot of training and a lot of experience, Curtis, not to mention a special license. I've been driving for 18 years and logged over a million miles without being responsible for a crash. And I have a family at home that thinks that's a pretty special thing. And if there's something I can do out here to help other drivers get home to their families, that's great. That's a lot of miles, Dave. How does that happen? Well, you have to be informed, alert, and follow some of the same basic rules as other drivers I'm sharing the road with. Making some adjustments for the type of vehicle I'm driving. It's not a car, and people driving around me need to understand the differences. Well, that's what we're here to learn about today. Now, let's meet our driver education students that are going to be with us while we learn about sharing the road with large trucks. We have Christine. Clarence, and Teresa. Any questions? Yeah, can we check out the truck? Sure. Nice ride. Why don't you tell us about it? Sure. This is a Kenworth W900. It has a Detroit diesel engine, which puts out 450 horsepower. It's capable of pulling 80,000 pounds. It weighs 25,000 pounds with the full-size trailer. Up here on the panel, you have all your critical information about how the vehicle's operating. You have your engine speed, your road speed, your axle temperature, your air pressure thrust. And down here, you have your 13-speed shifter, which takes us through all the gears we need to move that kind of weight over different grades. You got your radio and your tape player, your CB radio, oh, and your seat belts. I always buckle up in my truck, in my car, and so do my passengers. Back here, you have your sleeper cab. And out here, you have all the mirrors we need to keep visual contact on all the traffic around us. That's a lot of mirrors. That is a lot of mirrors. And truck drivers need them to see what's going on around them. Now let's go outside and learn about blind spots and no zones where truck drivers can't see you. What you're seeing here is a truck in three lanes of traffic with cars in front, on both sides, and behind. Now from here, we can see the truck and the cars. From inside the truck, we can see all the cars. Hey Dave, can you see any cars? I can see four cars. Let's move the cars until Dave can't see them either with his mirrors or in a direct sight line. We'll stop the cars when they first become invisible. Okay, Dave, can you see any cars now? I don't see any cars. These cars are in blind spots or no zones. You don't want to stay there when driving around a truck. You want to pass through them quickly. If a truck driver can't see you, bad things can happen. For example, if you're in the blind spot on the driver's side of a truck and he has to make a lane change to let in merging traffic and he can't see you, you could easily get hit. Blind spots and no zones are in front of trucks, on both sides, and behind. They're different for different trucks, but they all have them because of their size. A good rule to remember is that if you can't see a truck's mirrors, the driver can't see you. Blind spots are areas where truck drivers are unable to see your vehicle. Stay out of these no zones whenever possible and move through them quickly when necessary. If you are unable to see the driver in his mirrors, He's unable to see you. We're standing here at the entrance to Pit Row. One of the most dangerous things in racing is getting on and off the track to make pit stops for fuel and tire changes. That's because merging and exiting with traffic around can be difficult. It's really not any different than getting on and off our freeways. You have to deal with tight spaces and changing rates of speed. And just like in racing, the other vehicles may not be able to change what they're doing. Dave. What are some concerns that truckers have when dealing with cars entering and exiting the freeways? Well, when getting onto the freeway, you gotta pick your spot and go. You don't wanna get caught next to me at the last second because there may be vehicles on the other side that you can't see and I might not be able to move over. When leaving the freeway, you don't wanna pull too closely in front of me and don't slow down abruptly in front of me. Big trucks can't slow down as easily as cars. Exactly. Let's go out on the track and see what good merging and exiting looks like. 
From up here in the truck, we can see our merging traffic coming pretty clearly. Our student driver has picked a spot in front of the truck and has matched the flow for a smooth entrance just ahead of us. Now we're in the car behind our truck and we're going to see how to make a proper exit around a truck. Passing the truck, we make sure we travel quickly through the blind spots. When we're safely ahead where the driver can see us and we can see his headlights and the truck's front tires in the rear view mirror, we use our turn signal and enter the lane ahead of him. And here's the important thing. We maintain our speed until we enter the exit lane. Don't slow down when you're in the lane with the truck. When merging into moving traffic, pick your spot and go. Move with the flow of the traffic as closely as possible. When exiting, wait to enter the deceleration lane before slowing down. Always pass trucks on the left. Always signal your intention as early as possible. If you're within a mile of your exit, don't try to pass. Pull in behind the truck and wait until you can safely turn into the exit lane and decelerate. Never try to race a truck to an exit. Dave, earlier you mentioned that trucks can't slow down as fast as cars. How big a difference is there? There's quite a bit. It can pose some real problems if we're not given the proper space. Trucks have to deal with basic physics like everything else. For instance, inertia. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. How long it's going to take a truck to stop is basically going to rely on two things. How fast it's going and how much weight it's carrying. The more weight, the more time needed to slow down that momentum. A truck hauling steel will stop a lot slower than a truck hauling eggs. Hmm. How about a little experiment to show the difference between trucks and cars? Sure. Dave has got our truck coming around the track at 55 miles per hour. When he reaches the pylons where Clarence is standing, he's going to brake as hard as he can while still maintaining safe control of the vehicle. Earlier, we had Christine do the same thing with her car, and we left it where we can compare stopping distances. Here comes the truck now. Wow, it's a good thing we didn't leave Christine's car in the same lane. Our truck went 40 feet beyond where the car stopped and the trailer was empty. This represents a best case scenario for stopping a truck. So how much distance do you need in front of a truck in order to stop safely? Well, that depends. The important thing is to stay alert and be aware of the trucks around you. Always leave yourself an out, and remember, the trucks are looking out too. This chart shows stopping distances for cars at 30, 40, and 55 miles per hour. It includes perception and decision time, reaction time, and actual braking time. For trucks, you can safely add 20 to 30%. I'm standing in the middle of an intersection. But don't worry, it's an intersection we made here at MIS to show you some of the problems we encounter with trucks off the freeway. The first item I'd like to bring your attention to is this big white line. It's here for a reason. You need to stop behind it. If you stop in front of it, trucks and other large vehicles won't be able to complete their turns without hitting you. For example, Teresa is in the left lane waiting for the imaginary light. She's past the white line. We're gonna mark where the front of her car is and move her car back behind the white line. Dave is gonna make a left-hand turn in the truck. Let's see what happens. Oh no! It's a good thing Teresa moved her car behind the white line or she'd be doing some explaining to the parents. At a busy intersection, you might not be able to move your car. Then you've got a big mess. If you are the first vehicle to arrive at an intersection with a traffic signal or stop sign, make sure to stop behind the white stopping line. Trucks need space in front of the line to safely complete turns. There's another situation at an intersection that we'd like to call your attention to. Have you ever seen a truck parked like this? You know what? He did it on purpose. And here comes Clarence pulling right up behind him. There's room on the right, and he's going to try and pull up alongside him, but we're not going to let him. You know why? Because this truck is trying to make a right-hand turn. Clarence should have known that from the flashing turn indicator and the position of the truck. The important thing is that Clarence stays behind the truck. Let's put some cones up where Clarence wanted to go. Okay, Dave, go ahead and make that right-hand turn. 
Trucks sometimes need part of the left lane to make wide enough right-hand turns. Otherwise, they may hit the curb or objects close to it. Make sure that object isn't your car. Those cones sure are taking a beating today. Trucks make wide right turns. When approaching an intersection, check for turn signals. If a truck is indicating a right turn, stay behind it. Don't try to squeeze by on the right. All the things we've talked about today are important elements to sharing the road with big trucks. They'll all help you be a safer driver and get you home in one piece. And they all have one thing in common. They require that you pay attention. More people under the age of 25 die in car crashes than from any other cause. You're getting ready to do something dangerous. You need to pay attention. Don't let friends or the radio station or a mobile phone take your focus away from what you're doing. Driving. Stay focused. Now let's review some of the things we talked about today. Remember that trucks need more space to turn than cars. Always remember to stop behind the white lines at intersections to leave room for them. Trucks have blind spots just like cars, only bigger. Travel through them quickly and never stay in them for prolonged periods. Trucks make wide right-hand turns. Check for turn signals when you see trucks at intersections and leave them space. When merging into moving traffic, pick your spot and go, matching the flow of other vehicles. When exiting, wait to enter the deceleration lane before slowing down. If you're within a mile of your exit, don't try to pass. Pull in behind the truck and wait until you can safely turn into the exit lane and decelerate. Trucks need more time to stop and slow down than cars do. Never brake abruptly in front of a truck. Remember, these rules apply to all kinds of driving. And thanks for taking the time today to learn how to share the road with big trucks. Dave has driven over a million miles without a crash. If you keep these ideas in mind, Maybe you can do that too. Be safe. Now let's review some of the things we talked about today. Remember that trucks need more space to turn than cars. Always remember to stop behind the white lines at intersections to leave room for them. Trucks have blind spots just like cars, only bigger. Travel through them quickly and never stay in them for prolonged periods. Trucks make wide right-hand turns. Check for turn signals when you see trucks at intersections and leave them space. When merging into moving traffic, pick your spot and go, matching the flow of other vehicles. When exiting, wait to enter the deceleration lane before slowing down. If you're within a mile of your exit, don't try to pass. Pull in behind the truck and wait until you can safely turn into the exit lane and decelerate. Trucks need more time to stop and slow down than cars do. Never brake abruptly in front of a truck. <laughs>